The Fed had a meeting last week and made it very clear they still have not pivoted. Even with inflation below their target of 2%, they're perfectly happy keeping housing unaffordable for everyone just to see what happens. As a result, mortgage rates shot back up last week and are just below 7%. Housing inventory is still falling and we are back under 500,000 homes for sale in the entire country. New construction remains king as they hold most of the available supply and can offer huge incentives and low rates. And as you're going to see, home builders across the board are raising their prices and it's only February. All signs are pointing to an increase in demand and for the spring market to start early this year. My name is Michael. I'm a real estate agent here in the Dallas area, and every Monday I give you a weekly update covering all of Dallas and Collin counties. We're looking for trends. We're tracking mortgage rates as well as mortgage purchase applications, as that's our best leading indicator to what demand will look like 30 to 90 days from now. We'll be looking at things like median list price, days on market, how many homes are having price decreases, and what's inventory looking like. And if you stick around until the end, it's my favorite part. It is the top 10 ranked charts of the hottest and coolest both cities and zip codes in all of Dallas and Collin counties. If this sounds like something you're into, make sure to subscribe. And if you're looking to buy or sell in the Dallas area, whether it's next week or next year, I'd love to connect. I've helped every one of these yellow dots find their little piece of Texas, and I'd love to help you too. Just call, text, or shoot me an email. All that info is in the description below. Okay, today is February 5th. Let's see what the data is telling us. And if this is an old video, you can click the playlist here to get to the latest weekly market update. First up is market news. In last week's video, we covered that inflation is gone and it's already below the Fed's 2% target rate. As a result of that good news, we saw mortgage rates drop. The bond market was hopeful that this would mean the Fed is going to start cutting rates. However, last week, the Fed finally had their meeting and Powell made it very clear they are not pivoting yet. That means they are not cutting rates yet. It's very clear to me they care less about inflation, which is the thing they keep talking about, and what they really want to see is the jobs market breaking before they'll cut rates. If you look at this chart of the initial unemployment claims, you'll see that the four-week average is only around 206,000, which is incredibly low. You wouldn't consider the jobs market to be breaking until that four-week average gets above like 360,000. So we are nowhere near the jobs market breaking. So what does all this mean for you as a home buyer? There's a positive and a negative side. The positive side is mortgage rates staying high will keep demand low. Hopefully, this is going to lead to more supply building up so that when rates finally do drop, prices won't immediately shoot through the roof. It's my belief that rates don't even have to drop for the housing market to improve. If rates would simply become less volatile, more stable, then we would see more buyers and sellers willing to enter the market. The problem we saw last year was that you could list your home and by the time you got a contract on it, mortgage rates could raise 1% and you now couldn't afford your next home. That uncertainty kept a lot of sellers on the sidelines, not listing their homes. And this goes for buyers as well. If you were approved at a 6% rate and you don't contract on something this week, you might be looking at a 6.8% a week or two from now. And now you have to look at houses that are 100K cheaper. You already couldn't find a house in the first two weeks. Now you have to look 100K cheaper, just like that. So if rates will just stabilize, even if it's somewhere around like 6.5%, I believe the market will get a lot healthier. In fact, that might actually be the healthiest option there is. Because if rates were to drop today, there would be way too many buyers entering the market. And we still have not enough homes for sale. Less than 500,000 homes are for sale in a country of more than 330 million people. If rates drop now, prices will absolutely go through the roof. So the best option here may just be for rates to stabilize for a while, not drop. The negative for the Fed waiting to pivot is obvious. Mortgage rates are going to remain high, which means you can afford a lot less house. But the big negative would be if they actually do cause a job loss recession. If they actually keep rates high enough for long enough that we do see unemployment get above that 360000 on the four-week average, that would be the worst case. Because as of now, we have a very strong economy, inflation is gone, and it would be totally pointless to cause a job loss recession. The last thing I want to say here is do not try to time the market based on what rates are going to do. As you're going to see, home builders are already raising their prices, which means whatever they're seeing in real time there on the ground in their communities is leading them to believe there's enough demand and it's already increasing compared to the supply they have, so it's time to raise prices. Home prices are not coming down from here. Moving on, let's start with national housing inventory. This week, we had a decrease of 5,850 homes for sale in the U.S. That's this dip that you see here. And this little kind of flat looking blip that you see here corresponds to this week last year. So again, last year we thought maybe this is the bottom of housing inventory and it'll curve up. It didn't, it went straight down. I don't think that this year is gonna be that dramatic, but so far it doesn't seem we found our bottom for the year yet. Historically speaking, we should see the bottom of inventory around now, the end of January, beginning of February. However, ever since COVID, the bottom of inventory started in March and has only gotten later every year until last year, it was all the way at April 14th. 
So we're hoping for inventory to bottom out sooner because we wanna get back to a more normal market. So we haven't found our bottom yet. Hopefully it's gonna be way before April 14th, but this isn't something you can forecast. This is just something we can wait and see and hope for the best. Now we're moving on to new listings. This is the number of new listings coming onto the market every week. There were more new listings this week than the corresponding week last year, as you can see here. Both of the previous two weeks were right down here around 40,000. This week we're at 44,167. So there were 3,400 more homes homes listed than the corresponding week last year. And as you can see on this chart, we're kind of just pacing slightly better than the last two years. We need this to really improve. I mean, that's the hope. We need a lot more inventory. So we're not really getting it yet. We're just very slightly better than the last two years. It's not huge by any means, but we've got to start somewhere and at least we're not below or at where we were the last two years. But this is a very important chart. We're going to be tracking it all year. And our hope is that it's going to blow both of these charts out of the water as the year progresses. The last thing we cover nationally is the number of homes having price drops every week. Looking at the national chart this week, we're at 30.6% of homes having a price decrease down from 33% this time last year. And this was the biggest leading indicator all of last year. Nobody was talking about that prices are not going to drop. If you're going to have a price crash, you'd see it starting with an increase in the number of homes having price drops every week, not a decrease, which is what we had all of last year and even to now. And we'll look at all of these numbers in our local markets here in a minute. But as of now, looking at this chart, the number of homes having price decreases will probably shoot past last year's low, which again just tells you housing prices are not coming down. Okay, moving on to mortgage rates. We started last year at a 6.88. We got all the way down to 6.63. This was on the good news of inflation. Then Powell came out and said they're not pivoting yet, which shot us straight back up to a 6.92. So we did have a big fluctuation midweek, but overall from the beginning to end of the week, we only saw a 0.04% change for the week. That's the kind of boring stable rates that we want to see this year. As remember, stability is going to bring confidence for both buyers and sellers. Now let's look at the 10 year chart. Again, the 10 year helps us track more quickly where mortgage rates are going to be. My prediction range for the year was from a high of about somewhere about 4.25 to a low of about 3.25. I'm guessing we're gonna spend most of the year between these two black lines with room for deviations outside as high as those numbers I just said, as I've drawn in here. We have been kind of around the top of that range. I think we could go a little higher than where we are now, but not significantly. As you can see though, we were having such a great drop until the Fed's meeting. Now we're right back up kind of to the top of our yearly range. So you can expect when the numbers come out later this afternoon, if we ended at a 6.9 something, we're gonna be even higher than that. I'd be surprised if we're not a little bit above a 7% today. Now regarding mortgage purchase applications, this week we actually saw an 11% decrease in the number of people applying for mortgages. So after eight straight weeks of positive growth, we finally had our first negative week. And this is nothing to be concerned about at all. Of course, in any healthy market, things don't just go straight up forever. Okay, before we move on to our local market data, if you're considering buying a home in 2024, two things. One, I'm now doing a weekly online home buying webinar. This is for anyone thinking of buying a home in the DFW area in 2024. If that's you, click the link below and sign up, or you can watch a replay instantly as well. Number two, I've developed a max affordability calculator. This will help you very quickly and easily get into the ballpark of how much home you can afford today with today's rates and your personal financial situation. It'll give you several options to choose from, and it takes into account everything all the way down to your tax bracket. It's completely free to you, so please take advantage of it. If you're interested in that, you you can watch this walkthrough video that shows you how to use it next. Now we're moving on to the local markets. We're starting out with the MLS data. Starting out with Dallas County this week, we had 478 listings. That's 162 more than last week. 256 closed sales. That's 62 more than last week. 322 went under contract, 71 more than last week. Of the homes that closed, 55 were immediate sales, meaning they contracted within the first week, 24 more than last week. And in total, there are 1,968 homes either under contract or in pending status. That's 404 more than last week. Looking at Collin County, we had 303 new listings, 102 more than last week. 266 closed sales, 45 more than last week. 187 went under contract, five more than last week. 34 were immediate sales, that's the same as last week. And in total, there are 1,618 homes either under contract or in pending status. That's 200 more than the previous week. Okay, let's move on to the housing data. If you've seen my videos, you know I use what's called the Market Action Index. It just takes into account all of this data, puts it in one easy to read graphic with a number. Anything a 30 or below is a buyer's market. Anything above that, we're just asking how much of a seller's market are we in. Everything has been pretty much flat. There's not really anything to talk about this week. 
Median list price has been flat forever. Median price of new listings, you can see we're right about in the middle of where we've been. Median days on market the same, price decreases the same, everything has been flat. The only thing that looks like it's starting to tick up is the market action index, but even that is just perfectly within its range that it's been in. If we zoom in, you can see what you're seeing here that looks like it's starting to curve up is actually just this line that looks pretty flat. And Dallas is actually last year, this week the market action was 43.78, but the point is we're about to start going up. That's the only thing you need to know about this. We've bottomed out, we're gonna go up from here, the market is gonna get hotter, we just don't know by how much. But we were at 43.78 and now we're at 42.6, so we're a little tiny bit cooler than where we were a year ago, nothing significant. You could just say we're about at the same spot. Now moving on to Collin County, pretty similar story this week. Everything's just kind of moving on in the same range it's been. The only number I really care about here that I've been talking about every week is that the number of homes having price increases is continuing to go up. Now we're up to 6.69% of homes this week had a price increase in Collin County. And this again, of course, is builders as home builders make up a lot of the sales in Collin County. And it's very important because whatever they're seeing on the ground, that's real-time data. Everything that me and everybody else sees is delayed. We get it up to a month later than what they see, but they can see things that we'll never see also, like how many people are actually getting approved with their lenders, how many people are contracting their lots and buying homes that are never gonna be listed on the MLS. All of that is things that only they see and whatever they're seeing is causing them to think it's time to raise prices. There is a lot of demand coming in. So this to me is the most important number right now. Now, I would say this is a very early leading indicator, something worth watching. And I posted a video about this on Instagram, but there are several cities where this number could be as high as 14 to 16% of homes weekly are having price increases. And looking at their market action index as well, it looks like it's breaking out of a range here, but we're gonna zoom out. But they're already in a strong seller's market at a 45. So Collin County is actually hotter now than it was this time last year. It was a 41.91. Now it's already a 45.37, and this actually almost kind of does look like it's breaking out of this little range. But the point again is just, the market has been the coolest it's gonna be for the year, and from here on, we're gonna be heating up. That's all you need to know. Things are gonna get more expensive, they're gonna get more competitive. Okay, now we're moving on to the top 10 ranked charts. This is the hottest and coolest cities and zip codes in all of Dallas and Collin County, and this of course is using that same market action index number telling us how hot these markets are. Starting with the absolute hottest cities, the hottest city remains Coppell, followed by Louisville, which heats up two, Plano cools off one, Carrollton cools off one, Duncanville heats up three, Grapevine heats up one, Richardson cools off two, Allen heats up one, Saxe cools off three, and Garland jumps onto the list, knocking off Prosper for the number 10 spot. Then we like to zoom in on the specific zip codes. The absolute hottest zip code is Plano, 75023, followed by Carrollton, 75010, Garland, 75042, Louisville, 75077, Louisville, 75067, Frisco, 75035, Plano, 75025, Coppell, 75019, Plano, 75024, Carrollton, 75006. So those are the absolute hottest cities and zip codes in all of Dallas and Collin County. Now we're doing the same thing, looking for the coolest markets. The absolute coolest city remains Van Alstine, followed by Leonard, followed by White Wright and Balch Springs. Those all keep their spots. Van Alstine, of course, is the only buyer's market this week. That is, it's below a 30. Seagaville cools off one. Nevada heats up one. Ferris remains. Rockwall cools off one. Farmersville heats up one and Anna knocks off Red Oak for the number 10 spot. That makes this the hottest city on the coolest cities list. Then looking at the coolest zip codes, we have number one is Van Alstine, 75495. It's the only buyer's market, followed by Leonard, 75452. White Wright, 75491. Dallas, 75203. Dallas, 75249. Dallas 75223, Balch Springs 75180, Dallas 75204, Seagaville 75159, and Nevada 75173. If you're looking to buy or sell in the Dallas area in 2024, I would love to connect. Call, text, or shoot me an email. All that is in the description. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.